Right, so show show you what we've done so far. So steering wheel off. We've got the lower trim piece off and the upper piece trim as well down there. So upper and lower bit off. And now we've taken the clock spring out, which is here. And the plug that we're looking for is on the back of here, which is this. So along this top row, you've got numbered seven up to 14. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, which is this green with the black. So 11, that runs to the fuse box. So we've cable tied it to these set of wires here and here. And then the black one, we've removed this headlight just to get a bit more room and then we fed it into here. And we've piggybacked it into this number 18, which is for the radio as well. So two five amp fuses. And then the red wire into number 12, which is the data wire which runs through here to the center console. And then it goes onto here. I've had to make like a little push on, um, push on sort of pin. So it connects to these two brown wires on the other side. And then this is the connects to control module that plugs into the Pioneer stereo with the aux plug there. And then the connectors using like the original uh, Halfords wiring adapter for the radio so radio plugs in here into the halfords adapter and then we've got the data connection into this one this one is from the connects 2 module so these two from the halfords adapter into the connects 2 module and then both set the cables run through here from there there's these two that plug into here which run to the radio and then this section, which is the Connects 2 module, plugs there. This size is different to that one. That plugs into there. And then this one just goes to the aux, aux connection there. We don't have to worry about them, so I've just taped them to there. So yeah, that's all the plugs. And that's the only other one for the radio that's part of the, the Halfords adapter. Is That's from the original one, and then this adapter to here for that. So yeah. Looks quite messy, but hopefully we'll get it um, all sorted and tidied away, and then we can check that the the buttons work for the Sayat wheel. So that's what the Connects 2 module is, is basically an adapter for this wheel to get the, um, the buttons to work. So, so yeah, we'll get it installed and check everything's good. Right, another quick look, little section if you haven't taken the steering wheel off and the clock spring before on the Polo, this is how we do it. So we're going to do it in reverse order, putting it back on this slots over here and then here is this is what you have to take off that basically clamps it down and hold it on which is just one of those little screws so that's for this bit this plugs in this actually has a cover that sits over it you have to pull this bit up to release it and then there's two little tabs as well on there that you pull out to then slide it off to the right so uh, yeah just with a little screw and then slide it to the right that releases this so this plugs back into this top section that we'll then do. Right, so this is the cover we've just slid on from the right hand side. I'll just go ahead and push it into place. Once we do that, we've also got to push this then down to secure it back inside into the clock spring. Now when you're pushing the T41 cover back onto the plug, just be careful that you don't accidentally pull these out, make sure they're pushed down underneath here. This then plugs back into here as you put this back over the centre circle. So that'll plug in, this will then push down to connect it, make sure it's secure. And then your first one is here, which is just an Allen key to do this up. This will stop this coming off. And then bottom trim on there. There's two holes you can see here and here which are for these, these sit above this, I believe. So once we've got it in the right position, very fiddly, also got to get it around the keyhole there. But lower trim, and then we can do the top trim, and then the steering wheel. So there's not actually too many bolts for this, those are the battery ones. And then the main big bolt that we'll put in here, one thing to make sure as well when you put the wheel back on is obviously both are centered with that little line. That's important. Right, so clock spring's done, plugs back in. Next one, once you put the lower trim into the right place around the keyhole, there's two T20s to put back in there and there. 
There we go, for there on top. And then this one, the T20 with a little washer on, goes under here into the hole, so from underneath. Also, you can use this lever for the steering wheel so you can adjust the height when you're putting the trim piece back in. So it gives you a little bit more access and a bit more space to do that. So that's that step. Right, so just to explain what I'm doing with my wheel, I've copied Tom, um, essentially using the buttons and the airbag from the 6L SAT wheel. Ignore the outside bit, I'm just focusing on the airbag because it has the loom with this plug, which is the same plug as the 9N3 plug for the airbag. That's the 9N3 airbag. That's the plug, the yellow one, the same plug. So it has the same plug that plugs straight in, but it has this connector here, which connects to the buttons. And then there's a ribbon cable to that one. So you need the correct airbag. The Seat FR one and the Seat Ibiza one, I believe have a different airbag plug. I will put some pictures up here. And same with the Golf Mark V. So they don't have this plug that plugs straight in. So it might be a case of either a different clock spring to fit it, um, like the Mark 7 Golf Wheel video that Tom did, or taking the loom off of here and putting this plug loom onto that airbag. But what I've done is the same wheel that Tom has, but I've put it into the FR wheel just because I found one that looked quite nice and has little details on it, which looks quite good. So that's what we've done with this. And then we're going to put it back on and we'll test it. Right, so we've got the airbag, the wheel, we've put it over the top. And you can see it fits the same, fits over these two little rubber bits. And then we've lined, got to line up these two lines together. So they're in the right position. And then we can put the bolt back in. There is a torque setting for this that I'll put on screen as well for what this needs to be done up. I already had Loctite on it previously, but we'll put that back in. And then the airbag, and then the battery, and then we can test everything. Fingers crossed it doesn't blow up, but we'll find out, I guess. <laughs> right, I thought I'd, I'd done something wrong, because when I connected everything, initially it wasn't working. So, my Pioneer head unit, in comparison to Tom's, is actually a different one. Mine is a A240. Well, a DMH A240 Bluetooth. So that's this. This is my one. Another very basic one with a USB port, but no CarPlay, nothing like that. So the issue I was having is I was plugging the aux connector into the aux in, whereas on this one it needs to go into the SWC port. And now that I've done that, it works. So now I'm changing the volume up on here and it's increasing it on here, bring it down and then I can do next track as well. Might not do it whilst it's recording, my phone's really weird, but the, these ones work, so next track back and then these ones, I tried the mute button works, so mute, that mutes that, so if I need to mute it for whatever reason. Oh cool, okay. So this one changes the type of media I believe, so aux radio yeah the bit i was paranoid most about with this not working is um when i put these in i was worried that the pins i had on them weren't very good and they weren't going to connect to here very well and also sliding this over made sure it slide over in the right place and but yeah just putting the plastic trim bit back on that just clips in no um no screws or anything but i was worried it was either going to be that or there was an issue with the fuses for the fuse box so i've just got it in there we have the five amp two five amps into number 18 and then yeah all the connections work this one i've pushed onto the edge so it's connected well and it's very hard to pull it off so it's nice and tight and then yeah these are a little bit rubbish in terms of their connection you can push and pull them a little bit which affects whether this turns on or off but that's just a crappy Halfords adapter for you and then the same with that but yeah this actually works so yeah that was the culprit is not plugging it into the aux in but the aux cable into the SWC plug and now it works all right so this is the new look might be a bit controversial but we've made a VW badge out of a um, wheel sort of centre cap cover. So yeah, for the VW. Might still change the FR a bit, 
I quite like this finish actually, but not sure if we want to wrap this or do something with it. But yeah, that is the the new look.